Send me a thumbs up when ready to go. Good evening, everybody. This is Dan Donovan, principal of Danbury High School. I hope you're all able to get on and watch this as we go through and welcome back all of our about 2,000, uh, 1,900 students that'll be joining us in our hybrid model starting February 4th, 1st with the blue team and then February 4th with the orange team. Um, first, I'd like to start off by thanking and introducing my administrative team. Uh, they could unmute themselves and say hello, starting with Mr. Davidson. Good evening, everyone. Ms. Daniels. Good evening. Ms. Dr. Roy. Hi, everybody. Mr. LaRosa. Good evening, everyone. And Ms. Pereira. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Miller's on there because he's the one running the uh, YouTube live, so hopefully it's all working well. Mr. Salvestrini's coming on right now. He'll be on to talk about athletics and how that's going to work a little bit as we go through. And Dr. Martins will be jumping in and out uh, as she starts going here. So uh, I hope you can see what I've shared on my screen here. Uh, it's just a welcome back. And our, our goal for tonight is just to share some information with those parents uh, that are sending their students back into hybrid, um, let you see what we've done to the building and how prepared we are. We think as an administrative team, we're in a very good place uh, right now. Um, you know, we were in a pretty good place in October and I think we're even in a better place now. So uh, we're gonna show you what we've done. Hopefully that'll ease any of the anxieties that you may have. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same thing for the students when they come in. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go to, hello, Mr. Salvestrini, you want to say hello quickly? Oh, and Dr. Martin's got kicked out too. She's back in. Okay. That's not. So what we have to go on here, these are how the cohort numbers actually came out. Uh, what's pretty interesting is how uh, evenly matched they pretty much are. For example, uh, we knew when we were dividing the alphabet that they were gonna be pretty even. So if you look at grade nine in the blue cohort, cohort there was 450. In the orange cohort, there was 476. But then you look at the, the blue cohort who chose to go on DL and the orange who chose to go on DL, and there's only a 10 student difference. So it, it's pretty interesting. Now these numbers, Maybe there's a cohort C that we don't have in here right now because it was uh, just a little number of students that we took out. Um, so we don't have to go through and explain that part. But you'll notice that they're, they're pretty even as you go through. Uh, in the blue cohort right now, there's a thousand students who will be coming in. In the orange cohort, there's about 900. Now, those numbers have been fluctuating daily, uh, up and down uh, for it's, we not every student jumping out to DL. There's a lot of students that are, are feel good and are coming back in and want to be part of hybrid because the DL part's not working um, working for them. Hello, Ms. Festa. Uh, it's not working for them. So they had to go about and do that. Um, but you'll see that they are, they are pretty even as we go through. First thing we did was we made a, a video that Mr. LaRosa had put together uh, with a cameo from myself and Dr. Martins in the beginning. Uh, we're gonna play this now. We're gonna be showing this with kids and as we go through in our mentor flex for the first week and we'll explain what that is in a little bit. Uh, hopefully this works and uh, the technology will show it, but it's just a quick little video welcoming our students back and showing, highlighting some of the changes we've done to the building. that are coming back into hybrid starting on February 1st, which will be the start of the second semester. When you come in the building, you're gonna notice that there's a couple of things that are different, including some stairwells that are one way, a whole lot of hand sanitizer stations. But remember, practice your social distancing and always wear your mask. Let's go take a look inside.
Thanks again to uh, Ms. LaRosa for working on that and making me do my cameo in one take. Appreciate the efforts there. Um, we're gonna go over a couple of things just to talk about the different levels of the building. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention with the cohorts is probably the average um, class size coming in in a cohort is about seven. Uh, there are some that are like two and there are some, I think our largest one is around 15 kids. Uh, in one class just because of the way it's split up on that one class on that one given day. Um, so, you know, the, the average is about seven uh, for, for kids per class. So we, um, this is kind of the stuff we're gonna show the students when we hit Mentor Flex. Uh, there's some part, important parts to it that we wanna show. We'll go through it kind of quickly. Um, level one, whether it's G level one or, or D level one, we talked a lot as an administrative team for trying to come out, and we did this early in the summer, with one-way hallways, uh, as well as certain one-way stairwells, uh, down and up stairwells. Um, we couldn't, we could figure it out, but it was uh, really daunting for a student if they had to go from one place to another. And when you have connections like this, it, it was difficult to, to have them one way. Our hallways are far enough or wide enough that uh, students can pass comfortably as uh, long as they're not gathering. The other thing you have to notice is um, grab and go meals that we'll talk about in a little bit, but coming in right from outside the gyms where the parent uh, drop off and pick up will be over here. There's gonna be a grab and go station both for breakfast and for lunch. Any DHS student can grab a breakfast on the way in, go to their room, put up their shield, and eat their breakfast if they would like. And on the way out, they can any student can grab a lunch coming right through this gym and out uh, to their car to drive home or getting picked up by their parents. So we encourage all the students to grab one on the way out. Um, even if you're not gonna eat all of it that day, you know, it may have some nutritious snacks in there for you to have. So grab something on the way in and grab something on the way out. That's level one. Oh, okay, nice job, John, don't wait. Uh, the gym entrance where they can be dropped off, grab and go meals. Level two, uh, we have grab and go meals at the black box for any student who's driving and is parked on the black box side along with our mini buses who'll be dropping off there. Uh, they can come in and grab a meal uh, on their way in and on their way out at the black box entrance. The cafeteria with the big X on it is closed. Uh, the vending machines are not operational, so the, there's no reason for students to go in there. Uh, there's a couple of things going on in there. One, it's where we stored all of our extra chairs and desks that we pulled and file cabinets that were pulled out of teachers' um, rooms to make room to separate the desks are down there. It looks like a huge garage sale. And uh, the cafeteria staff uh, basically for the district is preparing lunches. They have a whole assembly line that they do the lunches for the district right now and put them on mini buses and send them out to, to families that need them. Um, so the cafeteria is closed before, during, and after school. Level three, uh, it's the same way that uh, we talked about, as I mentioned earlier, these hallways being one way, but there was no way to get people out of here and coming around uh, quick enough uh, without having them walk nine miles a day. Uh, so we decided with the hallways being far enough that they could go, um, traffic could move smoothly both ways. Again, this is how our students will be entering through the uh, front where the buses are gonna be dropping off and picking up. So grab and go meals will be available right here on the way in or the way out. There's also another entrance over here with no grab and go meals, but right here, there will be uh, cafeteria staff handing out meals on the way in. If you want to grab a breakfast, go to your, for the first week, your mentor flex for the rest of it, your block one class, sit down before 720, put your desk shield up uh, and eat. That is fine. And at the end of the day at dismissal, walk right out this door, grab your stuff, uh, find your bus, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit uh, and don't eat on the bus but find your stuff on the, uh, find your bus, go home and eat when you get home. Uh, we don't wanna make messes on the buses and you have to keep your mask on. 
Uh, level four, there's only two of them uh, for D and C. Uh, what's going to be interesting is I think a lot of kids don't even know that this uh, students may have never been in this stairwell before, uh, but this is going to be the up stairwell uh, coming through here and a down stairwell going through here on the front. So if you're going to go to C, you're going to go through this stairwell in the back. We made it one directional and then you can come back. If you are looking for uh, D5, uh, C5 is the same thing. You can go through the up stairwell and then down here. Freshman, on your way in, I will tell you this. There is no D5 and there is no pool, okay? So don't go looking for, they tell you to go to D5 or to try to find the pool. There is no pool at Danbury High School. Do not buy a pass for the pool. Do not get a discounted pass for the pool. There is no pool, okay? That's just a little tip from uh, Mr. Donovan there. Our water fountains are currently shut off but the bottle filling stations are open. Uh, so if you have, Dr. Martins, hold up your water bottle. I just saw you take a nice, if you, oh, it's a bubbly. I didn't even see that. It's a, if you have a water bottle that you would like to bring in, these are, there it is, filtered um, water stations that you can fill up your, uh, their sensor. You don't even have to push anything. You can fill up your water bottles here. I recommend that everyone bring in a water bottle uh, and, and use those filling stations there. Located all through G, uh, they're down uh, all, some places around the building. They're not everywhere, though, but G is the one that has them the most. Okay, stairwells, as we mentioned in the, you saw in the video, uh, are one way. Uh, this is the main one that comes in right off the bridge, and it's da the down stairwell. Uh, we're doing this because we felt that it was important for... Um, the traffic to go one way in the stairwells uh, you know when we have everyone in those stairwells get crowded especially this one because everyone uses this stairwell so if we have just a down stairwell and I think it'll take everybody including our, our seniors who have been here the longest to try to figure out ah oh, this is only a down stairwell uh, oh I'm going to just go up one flight now we're going to try to make it so that they it's one way so you're not passing other people uh, on the stairwell going the opposite direction we're going to see how this works for a while and uh, we're going to go with that. There's the one-way traffic signs, the down only. On the floor, it tells you which way you're supposed to be going. In or out, you'll also notice that they're the blue arrows throughout the school uh, tell you to keep right during while you're in the hallway, flow with traffic, uh, try to stay as far off to the sides as you possibly can. Look out for the hand sanitizers, and I will give you a heads up about this one. The pumping station on the hand sanitizer is like that long, and if you put that all the way down into your hand, you will have enough hand sanitizer to last you for a week. So you only need to do a little bit of a squirt and rub it in, because if you push it all the way down, it's going to go all over you. So be mindful of that if you're using one of those. Our mask policy, uh, DPS, the board has a mask policy that you can go look at. I didn't want to print it all up here. Uh, it just basically says that all students and staff must wear face masks at all times. Uh, while it really doesn't indicate what they are, if you want to wear a face shield, you have to wear a face shield and a mask. Uh, the mask is the big part. You just can't wear a face shield. If you want to wear both, you most certainly can, but you have to have masks on at all times. Uh, the only ones that are not allowed are masks with valves on them. They are not allowed uh, to be worn into the school. So masks on at all time from the moment you get on the bus till you come in to the moment you get off. You know, there's a lot of discussion about mask breaks and depending on the word you're going to hear the most is density. And depending on the density of the classroom, a mask break can actually take place in the classroom, especially with the shields and if people are working quietly. But mask breaks uh, will be given th throughout the day. If a teacher feels it's going to be there, up to them. If they think, hey, we need a mass break, we've set up uh, tables outside in the courtyard. I know it's cold, but if everybody wants to go out and get some fresh air, they can take a little walk out there. Again, remember, we're dealing with numbers in a classroom of like seven. So uh, a lot of these can take place in there when you have your shields and your your um, at three feet apart are um, with the shields and all of that. We are rated at about your average classroom, I think it was 24 kids could fit into it. 
because all the stuff we pulled out. So now we're talking seven. So I think they're gonna have assigned seats. They're gonna, they can use their shields and they're gonna be spread out through the classroom. So if you're working there, a teacher can say, put your mask down, uh, take a couple of breaths. Cause sometimes they do get a little, uh, you know, it, it, they do start to irritate a little bit, but that will be up to the teacher. It was kind of impossible for us to come up with a schedule of who needs a mass break and when, because of the fact that I don't know when the class needs a, a mass break. The teachers know better. If they've been doing a lot of talking, they may need one. If they're just sitting there, they can pull their mask down. So, uh, One of the things we're going to be talking to the kids about is how to wear your mask. It's not just good enough to have a mask. Masks must be worn properly. It sounds kind of ridiculous that we have to go over this, but this is how a mask should be worn. Uh, not like this and not definitely as under the chin. Um, this is for not only your safety, but everyone else's in the that's coming in the building. So wear your masks and, and wear them properly, please. Um, whoops. Uh, the self-assessment part, this is uh, where we need help from the students and, and parents. You know, we are not going to be uh, temperature checking people on the way in. There's been a lot of back and forth about that, but uh, our medical staff does not believe that that's gonna be helpful to us. Uh, so we are not going to be temperature checking. So you, we're asking that parents and students do a self-assessment. Oh, where'd the self-assessment go? Oh, John, did my self-assessment disappeared. Well, the self-assessment anyway talks about everything that you've heard before. It's not anything new. It, you know, if you feel that you have a fever, chills, cough, so shortness of breath, fatigue, anything like that, it, um, you know, stay home. And, and it doesn't mean that you have COVID. It doesn't mean you have to, 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 to run to the doctor immediately, but you have to stay like that uh, at home for at least 24 hours after the symptoms have stopped. Uh, if, if you call your doctor and say any of those symptoms, they're probably going to send you to get tested at this point. Um, but, you know, it's up to you uh, as parents and students to say, yeah, I'm not feeling good. I think we're going to uh, stay home today which leads us to an attendance question that people have. If my son or daughter was scheduled to come in for a hybrid, wasn't feeling, you know, we did the right thing here and we said, hey, we're, we're gonna stay home because they're feeling a little bit and they go to school remotely, does that count uh, as an absence? No, it does not. The teacher will just tag them remotely. Um, what we do need is we need the parent to notify the school. Um, we need to notify that the, the student who's supposed to be in hybrid is not going to be in today, you, you know, you know, and maybe working remotely. The teacher will code that correctly, but we want as the school to know, because if you happen to be at work and they stay home, you may not have known they stayed home and you're not going to get the, the robo call that you would normally get for an absent because we are uh, treating the remote present as present in school. So if they're not feeling good, it's no penalty for it. Just stay home. Uh, give us a call and just say, hey, you know, we did the right thing. We're keeping them home for, uh, you know, today, tomorrow, whenever. Uh, but they're going to be on classes. Uh, we'll be grateful if you could do that because that would be um, a big help to all of us if that could happen. Uh, classrooms and some of the stuff we've done. There's our, our, our favorite senior, Mr. LaRosa, who did graduate from here, but many years ago. Uh, we got these desk, sh desk shields. Uh, there's enough for each student that will be in the class. So if the largest number in that classroom is, say, 16 students at one time, the, the classroom has 16 desk shields. Um, you know, we felt this was better than giving each, one, each student their own and have them walk around with it, bring it home and bring it back. It's only made of corrugated cardboard and a, a little plastic shield. We figured that they would break up pretty, pretty much, um, pretty easily. So what we're trying to do is, is just preserve them as long as we can. So they're going to stay on the desks. Um, and when kids come in and out, they can do that. Uh, cleaning supplies, as you saw in the, the video, each room has a tub of wipes right now, uh, paper towels and a spray. The spray is a spray that can be used in school without gloves. It requires one minute of contact. So if you spray a desk down, um, you can uh, wait one minute and then wipe it up, you're good to go. 
we can ask any student that wants to do that if they want to come in and spray their desks down teachers to spray the desk downs and then have students wipe them down in between classes it's just one way to make uh, you know, take another precaution there. So we're going to be doing that. Um, with students safe, we don't have to worry about using those chemicals in school. The bathrooms, we have extra custodians on during the day that will be cleaning them regularly. We have a, a sheet that they uh, check out that they've cleaned that bathroom so we can monitor if they've been clean. You know, we are going to monitor the bathrooms for density. It's a, it's a word I said uh, again. So we're not hanging out in the bathrooms. We're going into the bathrooms. We're doing what we have to do. We're going to wash our hands. Uh, and then we're moving along. So we, we're not going to close certain bathrooms. Uh, we don't like to do that uh, and, you know, make kids go to because then we're going to have a more density in the bathroom. But we are going to tell students, come on, let's go. Let's move along. Don't hang out in the bathroom. But that's a, So we'll try that part of it. So what happens if you are ill during the day? You notify your teacher. Uh, your teacher is going to call down to the nurse's office. The nurse will meet you either at the nurse's office door or direct you to what we call the COVID room, which is located across from the nurse's office attached to the media center. Um, they will do their assessments. They will do what they have to go through. And from there, they'll make a determination if you're going to stay in the COVID room or if you're going to go into the nurse's office. The reason for that is um, a lot of students go in and out of the nurse's office every day for reasons that aren't COVID, like medicines and things like that. So we didn't want to contaminate the nurse's office. So there's a separate room where kids can wait. And uh, within 30 minutes, we're hoping a parent can come pick them up or whoever can come pick them up. So um, the less time in the school, the better. And then from there, we go through contact tracing. Uh, you know, as you saw, they were closing down classrooms. And if you've read anything, this is our first time coming in. Uh, but you've seen, you know, New Fairfield, the Brookfield, uh, a new town going in and out of school it's going to be the same thing. So you're, you know, you may have to check your emails and listen for those robos that come out that uh, your son or daughter uh, through contact tracing was in a room with someone who may have tested positive and uh, we'll, we'll look at things like that. Um, so the contact tracing begins at that point. That'll be done with the administrators and uh, the nurses at Danbury High School. All right, so the first week we're coming back we are going, it's a little change of a schedule. We are going into Mentor Flex from 7.20 to 7.55 each morning for the first week. 7.20, so when you come in, you're going to Mentor Monday. I don't have to Monday, it's the whole term. Your Mentor Flex from 7.05 till 7.20, but if you get here at 7.20, it's no problem. But you cannot get in the building till 7.05 that's when the buses are going to let go at like 703 to get in because we don't want students hanging around. There's no more cafeteria. We don't want uh, students just gathering in the hallway. So you immediately come in, you grab your breakfast on the way in, you go to your mentor flex room, which will be open at 705. You stay there from 720 to 755. And then if you are on DL or the opposite cohort, you know, you go from at eight o'clock, you will join your block one class. And then when we go Wednesday, Thursday, I mean, Thursday, Friday, the orange groups coming in and going to their mentor, uh, their mentor flex and, and things like that. So uh, the first week when we start on two one, this is the schedule we're going to be running. So why are we doing this? Because this is the first time for many of our students, they're stepping into the building. We have a you know, a whole freshman class that have never been in this building and our sophomores left here in March. So there's a whole, you know, and they were in G most of the time. So now they're out in a different place. So the first thing we're going to do is they got to greet each other. They're going to want to see each other. This is their mentor flex with their mentor teacher. It'll be new for our, our freshmen and somewhat of our sophomores, but for our seniors, which have been with their mentor flex for uh, you know, four years now, possibly that, you know, they're going to have some time to talk and greet all the people that are in there with them. We're going to hand out IDs. We're going to take some tours. You know, we weren't able to do tours before. Um, this time we did it in October. We couldn't get it done this time. So, you know, the, the either on a month, one of the days that the cohort is in, the teachers are going to be taking their uh, mentor flex on a tour of the building. Uh, to show the up-down stairwells, where things are, and, and so forth. We understand that 
There's a group that have not been in this building yet, so we want to take it a little slow. We got to go over our procedures and protocols. A lot of the stuff, I said IDs again, um, procedures and protocols that you saw, uh, the sign in and outs of rooms. If you're in one for more than half a second, you got to sign in if you're not supposed to be in that room um, and things like that. What the mornings and hallways, and then finally how to find your bus at dismissal. We got to go over that on day one or we'll have a whole bunch of kids because this is new for every student. Uh, all the buses are up front and they're double lined, which is going to be new for every student at DHS. Uh, so it's important that that's gone over in the flex, mentor flex um, on day one. After the first week, we're back to our, our normal schedule, 7.05 to 7.20, you arrive, go to your block one, 7.20, you are uh, in your block one class. And if you're in the blue team on Monday and Tuesday, you're sitting in the desk at 7.20, ready to go. Uh, we're going to be pretty vigilant about students hanging out in the hallways and getting to class on time. Uh, so, you know, by 7.20, you'll hit the sprint bell at 7.19 and you're ready to go. The big thing is the change in the afternoon. In the afternoon, our orange team and our DL students, your job is to go to flex. You should be in your flex classes. You had four flex classes this day, you should be in four flex classes in the afternoon. If you didn't have one, then don't go to it. But if you did, you're supposed to be in these flex blocks right here to make sure that you have an understanding of what happened in class today. You know, from where we stand, we believe our teachers are getting very proficient in the distance learning part. Now coming back to hybrid is throwing a whole uh, new curveball at the teachers. So there's gonna be some difficulties managing the in-class and the at-home students, whether they're DL or a different cohort. Because what we don't want is we don't want it to come in and have our students just sitting on a giant Zoom, but they're in school. We want them to interact with the teacher when they're in there. We don't want it to be just a Zoom. So it's important that um, we understand that, that we want them to go. But there's gonna, it's also important to understand that there's gonna be some you know, implementation type dip of the strategies that are going on. And all of a sudden the, the echo in the room is too loud. So there's a lot of things that we're gonna have to work through, but it's very important that the opposite cohort go in the afternoon. So that teacher and those students have an understanding that, okay, you got it. And it may not take all the 20 minutes that it's there. If they walk in and, and Mr. Davidson's class and John shows up and he says, yep, I'm good. I understood what you were doing. Okay, man, just check in and see you later. But it's very important we do that. Mentor flex is always uh, the same. Everyone should be in their mentor flexes. This is very important, not only for the social emotional learning part of school, but this is where they get to see the other cohorts and things like that and different people. So the mentor flex is important for everybody. And then on Thursday, Friday, when the orange team is in, the blue team uh, goes to their flexes in the afternoon. Uh, parents, if they tell you, uh, I have nothing to do, you always, first word out of your mouth, flex. Ask them where they're going, what they're doing. If you don't have a flex, yeah, you should be in a flex. You know, you have an 89 in the class. Well, guess what? You could have a 90 if you possibly go to flex. So let them go to flex. Let them get their extra help there. Let them do what they have to do during this flex time. That's why it's there. It's built in for that purpose. So they can get a smaller, more individualized understanding of what's going on. Buses, Mr. LaRosa, you're, right. you're gonna talk through this one. I'm tired of talking, I gotta drink the water. What does the front look like? Hi everyone, we changed things a little bit this year um, to try to accommodate the large number of parent drop-offs that we anticipate. Um, we've moved all of our uh, bus drop-offs to the front of the school. So you can see they're gonna line up in two rows in that front driveway alternating so that there's space between each bus for students to safely pass between the buses to get to um, the outer row. Um, Mr. Davidson made a great video that Mr. Donovan's gonna share in a moment that shows students how to read the bus list that you can see here on the right side each day that's posted out front. Um, and that helps them find their bus use it, utilizing the stop signs that are kind of marked um, on the sheet and then also on the driveway. Every day the buses don't come in in the same order. So learning how to read the sheet is extremely important because when you come out of the main entrance of the school and if you have to catch your bus, which is in the very front, um, that's a good 200 meters. So you can't run down there and see if your bus is there. And if it's not, then run back to the back. You need to know where you're going 
Um, and Mr. Davidson made this excellent video that hopefully will help everyone um, find their bus quickly. Mini buses will still be in the same spot they always are, which is down by the black box area. Um, and parent drop off and pickup is gonna be off of Beckerley Street at the athletics um, entrance. So here's Mr. Davidson's video. Thank you, Mr. Davidson, for putting that together. Oh, boy. One of the toughest things we have is that first week of school, trying to find their buses. So if you're, your child is a, is a freshman or has never taken the bus before, uh, tell them that a lot of teachers are outside. We're all outside. We'll help them. We hold the buses a little bit extra on the first week just to make sure everyone's going. But that's usually when we're dismissing about 3,300 kids. And this time we're only dismissing a thousand at a time. So we should have no problem getting them out there. So if you're going to arrive by car, you are uh, going to get dropped off at the uh, gym entrance as we call it, which is off of Beckerley Street, which is down here. We're trying to keep the buses and the cars separate from each other because it kind of causes some problems. Uh, what we don't want is, another problem is do not drop off on Field Road. Uh, this is a, sometimes we have police officers here, we don't have crossing guards. Sometimes there's a police officer here and sometimes they're not, which makes it very difficult. It's a very, very busy road in the morning for anybody that traveled it. The front will be shut down from 6.45 till 7.15 every day if you're arriving before or, or hopefully not before because you'll be standing outside in the cold for 20 minutes uh but you're arriving after that then most certainly you can use the front but during our drop off and pickup times uh please parents use this area uh we do not expect our um our student parking lot to be as crowded as it normally is um if we looked at the number of parking passes that we've sold already and divided in half it's probably about 100 110 of them uh, for 300 spots. So you can pull in here and just text them and say, hey, I'm in the second row. Come in, uh, come on out and I'm straight ahead. After they do what? Grab their grab and go lunch and walk out the door. So um, that's where we would like parents to drop off in the morning. You come in this one, Beckerly, drop them off and come right back out. You don't have to worry about the buses. Breakfast and lunch we've talked about, uh, you know, grab a frutal on the way in, uh, your milk, and then you, the first week you're going to go into your mentor flex, you can eat it there. After that, it'll be your block one until 720. If you show up at 720 and want to start eating your breakfast, your teacher may have an issue with that because class is going to start. So if you want to eat breakfast, make sure you're getting there with into class with enough time to do that. Lunch looks like this. It's on the way out. It's right by the doors. All you have to do is just grab it as you go by and you can take it on that bus or you can eat it before you have to come back for practice, but there is no eating on the buses and it doesn't become, it's a nice little snack for you right before you have to go out and do whatever you do in the afternoons. 
Mr. Salvestrini, would you like to talk about what's going on with athletics? Yes, Mr. Donovan, thank you very much and welcome to everyone. Uh, just We're going to talk just a little bit about athletics. Normally, uh, by this time, early late January, early February, we're about three quarters of the way through a normal winter season. But uh, far from normal this year, as everyone knows, uh, we're just starting up our program. We're actually taking baby steps. Uh, the state uh, gave us the okay January 14th to start winter sports and the school district gave us uh, the opportunity to, to follow that. And last week we started virtual classrooms, practices and virtually. And for the next couple of days, we are going to be outside conditioning as best we can with the, with the weather. Uh, teams are open. I suggest to the parents, if you are, your child is interested or freshman out there, go to the Danbury High School webpage. It's right up there, right there. You want to look for your coach, the coach of the team that you're interested, email that coach, and we'll certainly uh, get information to you about where to go, who to meet, and the times. Again, it's a little different. Uh, school, we, we don't start practices this year until three o'clock. Uh, they're a reduced schedule. As an example, basketball would normally play 20 plus games. They, they're probably going to play 12 this year. Uh, we actually we have swimming. We, we're running virtual swim meets. Uh, we have boys and girls indoor track outdoors. So they're working outdoors with the hope that we may have some indoor track meets outdoors. So that's how we're going to attempt to do that. We have boys and girls basketball. Wrestling and cheer are going to practice, but those are two sports that were deemed high risk by um, the Department of Health. Uh, they're, they're allowed to practice, uh, but not compete in any activities. We also have ice hockey, gymnastics, and uh, we're moving right along. On February 1st, when everybody comes in for the hybrid, uh, we were going to begin afternoon practices at the high school. Uh, all athletes will wear masks. All the athletes have check-in. We have self-check-in monitored by our two athletic trainers. And it's similar to what Mr. Donovan said at the beginning of the day. Uh, we just check in athletes. Anybody has to answer some questions, they don't feel well, et cetera, we're going to send them home. Uh, we did pretty well in the fall. We, uh, we almost made the full season. We had a couple of uh, issues near the end. And a goal, our goal this year, of course, with winter is to do the best we can to get the kids a, an opportunity to engage with their coaches and their classmates. Can't tell you how excited our coaches were today to actually meet some of their athletes again for the first time in months. So it went well today. We had a workout outside today in 30 degree temperature. We had about 140 kids and uh, we're looking forward to build on that, although it's going to snow tomorrow, we're told. So hopefully the snow gods will stay away for a few days until we can get back and inside and do our normal things. Again, I uh, hope that you, if you're interested, you check on that website. Uh, together, we're gonna win. And we always talk about that as athletes. So together as a high school, we're gonna beat this and we're gonna get back to normal as soon as we can. So if you're interested in sports, give us a call and get you involved as best we can. Mr. Donovan. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, appreciate all you've done trying to manage this ship and, and keep it going in the ever-changing world that we have going on right now. But I, I do appreciate on behalf of everybody all of your efforts this year trying to stay the, um, stay with this. So thank you. All right, school closures. Uh, what will cause it to happen? Obviously, a snow day, which I put in there, uh, you know, that will cause it to happen. But... When we're talking about COVID and uh, things like that, what will cause the uh, school to close? Well, we've done a lot of work with looking at our substitute numbers and our staff numbers and trying to come around how many teachers could be quarantined uh, before we would have to close school or if we have a spike in numbers or something like that before we'd have to shut it down. Um, each night, we're going to be monitoring that activity to see where we are, and we're in close contact with our staff 
uh, with regards to what's going on with them. Uh, but there's definitely a number. When we come back, we're taking this risk uh, that it may be shut down again at, at some time. Um, we are not doing what the middle schools are doing, where they're staying in their classroom, um, you know, for the day and but they're in school, but they're staying in one classroom. We're going to switch classrooms. The administration and I had a lot of discussions about this and just felt that, you know, the getting up and moving and the socialization part is, um, is good for the kids. And that's why one of the main reasons that we want them back in here uh, is to, to get them to see other people and get out and walk around, even if it's just waving to a friend in the hallway. So we're going to go with that. But with that, puts us at risk for more teachers being into quarantined, uh, which could cause problems for coverages and things like that. Uh, there are some teachers that are out uh, that have uh, some medical maybe conditions or some condition that won't allow them to come into school at this time. So what we're gonna do is we're calling it a virtual classroom in reverse in which the students will go to D360 like it's you know 3A block and the teat will have another teacher in there and their classroom teacher will, will uh, Google meet in and be projected out so, so they can do work. So for that class, they'll be on all distance learning. Um, it's not a large number of, of teachers in our school. It's less than 5%, um, but just so you know that it does happen. And if a teacher is out sick, that's how we will cover it in class. We, even if it's asynchronous, we will have teachers or substitutes or whomever go in there and um, monitor the classes while they're out. Um, Ms. Daniels, would you like to talk about peer tutoring? Sure, Mr. Donovan. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ms. Daniels. I'm a level two assistant principal. Um, essentially, uh, we have a history at Danbury High School of trying to support our students through tutoring programs and allowing students to connect. And so we didn't wanna lose sight of those opportunities for students to connect during the pandemic and also uh, receive supports um, as they may be struggling with distance learning due to whether it's lack of sleep or just looking for extra help or a way to connect with a student. Um, we came up with the idea as a group to do the peer tutoring program, which is virtual and online. Um, students have the opportunity to go into a Google Classroom using the code sign up uh, to meet with another peer, and they essentially connect to work on um, academic coursework. So we have opportunities for students to receive supports in math, um, English, their course subjects. They can also do just a group study. Um, and we are also looking to increase the translation support. We have translation services for our students as well. Um, at the time, we had um, 164 students signed into the Google Classroom. We're now at 179, and we have about 20 pairs of uh, matches, matches between a student to student um, for the tutoring program. We are hoping to expand. Uh, this has only been our third week, I think, of opening uh, or trying this out. So um, we have been seeing some growth, and we hope that you would encourage your child um, to join us if they are struggling and would like to receive support. Um, the times are Monday through Thursday, 3 to 8 p.m. Um, however, students sometimes might schedule out outside that time frame, which is also available if they'd like to work on the weekend. But that's um, a little bit about our peer tutoring program. Thank you, Ms. Daniels. Excellent job in getting that up. Uh, parents, that can be found... Um, you can be found as a Google Classroom for it, and all the teachers have posted it, so they should be aware of it. If not, they can just ask their classroom teacher because uh, it was all posted uh, through their Google Classrooms. But excellent job in trying to support our kids once again. Um, some important up upcoming dates. Tomorrow is the PSATs, and we're going to have it. Uh, snow is not coming till later, <laughs> please, not till later. So we're going to get our about 400 juniors coming in to take the PSATs. So for the rest of the school, it's an asynchronous day, which means that you, uh, they will have work to do. They will have to answer the attendance question, but there's no live meets or, or instruction like that. Uh, our teachers are gonna be proctoring a large part of them. And for the rest of the time of the day, they are going to be in um, working to set up their classrooms to make sure that they're all ready for the virtual part 
and the in-school part and checking everything so they're, they feel ready to go when we start. This Friday, uh, January 29th, semester one ends. We're halfway through the year, which was the reason why we waited uh, until February 1st to have uh, our students come in. You know, the district decided they were gonna do a rollout uh, starting with elementary and then middle. And they asked if we wanted to come back in on the 25th. Uh, we didn't think it was smart to bring our students back in uh, to meet their, you know, especially a lot of them, half of them are semester classes for one week and then switch classes all over. So we said, we'll lay one it out for one week more and then we can start fresh semester two, uh, that being the blue cohort. Uh, February 4th, the orange cohort's first day is coming into the building. We're starting with Mentor Flex for them so they can get the tours and the IDs. We bought blue lanyards for the, uh, the blue cohort or orange lanyards for the orange ones. The staff have all white ones. So when we all get back together, hopefully very soon, We'll have a nice orange, white, uh, and blue lanyards coming around the school. That So and we're going to want and expect students to wear their IDs once we get them all out to everybody. Uh, DL students, uh, we will set up times in the near future or have them up front uh, on their lanyards. You're just, you're in a cohort as well. So if you're in the blue cohort, but you're on DL, you're still in the blue cohort. So we will have that, that you can come pick things up like that. Also, uh, if you need to pick up materials for your second semester or drop off materials, you can do that with the safety advocates in the front of the building. More information about the dates and times of coming out can be found in the letter that was sent today. Uh, even a nighttime pickup uh, for, the, for if you have to get materials or things like that, please come in and get them so we can do it. We're looking for a March 1st virtual spring conferences and school fair. This, just believe it or not, is to start letting our, the eighth graders in Danbury know what Danbury High School is about. Uh, and I think it'll be very, very beneficial for our freshmen now at that point to see what um, offerings we have at the high school uh, so they can start picking their classes as we go forward. Uh, and March 8th is the snow date for the virtual conference that we'll have there where we will have um, teachers available to, to talk to like uh, in conferences, but we'll also set up times with uh, DHs to talk about curriculums and offerings within their um, departments. You know, it, pretty much in closing, um, I'm going to look at the additional question sheet. Uh, I did answer them. Uh, three that I have that are new are, are all blocks of flex now mandatory on both in person and at home days, not in person days. If you are on an in-person day and you're feeling really good about what's going on, uh, then you don't. But we really want the at-home students and the other cohort to check in with their teacher. Like I said, it may be just a five-minute check-in, just to say I'm in a good spot uh, with their teachers. You know, it's tough to say the word mandatory. We use it. Don't tell them. But, um, you know, we can't make them go. There's no grades involved with it, but it'll help them get a better understanding of what's going on. So, I think if using the term mandatory and Mr. Donovan said it helps you get them on because we really can't do it, then I suggest that we do that. Um, how do students get extra help when they don't understand something? That's the first place they go is flex. First place they go is contact the teacher, have them sign up for flex, sign up for the teacher's flex. Uh, and then if not, uh, they couldn't get in there or stuff. There's the peer tutoring Ms. Daniels just mentioned. There's two great avenues that you can go down, but flex, is the number one time that you should be able to go there. You're talking about half the kids, okay? Um, are students allowed to have in-person meetings for extracurricular clubs, robotics, and math teams? The district's coming around that. We did use, we had robotics up and going. I don't see clubs like the math team are, are probably gonna stay virtual, but something like robotics that has to actually build robots, we're gonna look to get back up, band, things like that as we get going here. Uh, in the second semester. As far as the buses, how will the seating be spaced? Uh, is it one student per seat? Families can be together. Um, you know, they try to go every other end diagonal. It depends on the number of bus. But if everyone's facing the same way, I the windows will probably be cracked if not opened a little bit to get an airflow. Uh, and masks must stay on. Must stay on. They're going to try to space out students on the bus. From my understanding, our numbers are very low on buses, uh, so they'll be able to space them out pretty good. Um, and they're gonna have the bus drivers, please have your 
uh, child just listen to where the bus driver tells them to sit because they're not doing it to be mean. They're doing it because we need a specific spot for them to go. Uh, like I said, is it one student per bus? Hopefully now it is, but families can sit together. So if you're a brother and sister or coming out of the same household, uh, you can be in the same seat as somebody else. So, uh, With that, the last part I'll talk about is expect the unexpected, you know. <laughs> We get it with Wi-Fi outages, whether it's Stanbury High School, Danbury, Xfinity, or Google, they're going to happen. Uh, and we're, there's no reason to panic. We, we all know what we're going to do with them. We all figure out what's going to happen. If it happens at Danbury High School and we don't have Wi-Fi, then if you're at home, you, you know, your son or daughter may be sitting there going, you know, hey, I can't get on. I can't do this. And if it continues to happen and if it's a big problem, then you're going to get uh, notification from the school. That it does. One of the coolest things that that we look at is if you can just Google it, um, it's it'll tell you when Google's down or Google's having issues. So if your son or daughter can't says I can't get on, then you can just go Google that and say, yep, you see a big spike that says they're running into error error problems and can't get on. Then yes, something's up. Um, it doesn't hurt for you to try to send an email to the teacher to ask if this class was down. Um, but you know, just expect that we're going to have the tech in issues. We're going to have quarantine staff, which means that the students are going to be back to virtual teaching just like they are now. Uh, like I said earlier, we're getting good at it. We're getting much better at the tools that we have for it. Uh, I think our teachers are doing a great job with that. So uh, expect that to happen. Snow days, I had a question about snow days before. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I think the district is not going to give any more snow days now. I think we're just going to go remote. And uh, I don't know about tomorrow. But uh, it looks like there's something on the horizon for Sunday. So we may be able to try that out on Monday. Uh, and lastly, and kind of what I'll close with is communications key. If you have uh, a problem or a concern or a question, reach out to the counselor, reach out to the administrator, reach out to the teacher. You know, we ask that you go to the teacher first uh, before you just come straight to the administration. Not because we don't like talking to you. It's just that I don't know what happened. So then I got to backtrace to the teacher. So try to resolve whatever the question or, or may be with the teacher and, and then bring it to administration or the counselor, uh, just because it, it'll save us all time. We can get the resolution to it a, a lot quicker, but communications is key. Feel free to email your child's teachers at any time. If you have a question about something they said or something that's going on uh, and, and let us know. Uh, and with that, did I make it? I was trying to shoot for under an hour and, and it looks like, ooh, we did it. We just got there. Um, you know, it's a lot of information that we went through rather quickly and I'm sorry for that. Um, but uh, if anybody has any more questions or anything like that, you can always reach out, like I said, to everybody else. Uh, with that, I can't wait to see some of my juniors here tomorrow to take those PSATs, get to bed early, bring your calculators and pencils. Uh, and for the rest of the Hatters that are coming in, I'll either see you on the 1st or the 4th. And, and until